Hello and welcome back to Rugby Pass Offload with me, Christina Mahan. And today I'm joined by the hero from Paris, Ryan Wilson, and Wales and Lions legend, Mike Phillips, to chat through all the rugby from the weekend and celebrate Mike's amazing career. How are you both? Mike, welcome oh, to the show. How are we going? How are we going? Mike over in Dubai, eh? What about it? Mate, you're the hero, mate. Um, <laughs> no, it's all good, mate. Yeah, pleased to be on. Uh, thanks for the invite. Um, yeah, it's all good. I'm all good. Well, thanks for coming on. Well, look, Mike, we will catch up with you in a minute, but I do need to start with my player of the match and my unsung hero of the round. Uh, Ryan, congratulations. So after two months of being a fan and a pundit, you were called back into the squad for your 50th cap. How amazing did it feel to be part of such a historic victory? Um, yeah, it was good. It was good. We made sure we uh, we celebrated after, that's, that's for sure. But I think it's the way it all came about, Christine. It was just the most mental few days. Like, I've been out of the set up for 18 months since the World Cup now. So to like for the for the story that I'm about to tell you how it unfolded is just you couldn't have written it. We went across Glasgow Warriors got told we needed to go and train against Scotland the morning before they fly out to France. It's Wednesday afternoon. And I'm going, oh can I be bothered with this? Like thinking of pulling a sickie, I'm that I'm that not bothered about going over and training against Scotland with Glasgow. So we were we're preparing for Treviso. So we get over there train against them and it's literally not until the end of training that Tooney comes over to me and says we need you to come to France and I no was way. like that's you must, you're, having, you're having me on and he was like no that's it we need you to come because Matt Faggerson sadly got injured in well I say sadly listen I am gutted for him because he's uh he's injured himself quite badly but um yeah it couldn't have come at a better time for me bloody hell the only reason I went though is because I had I had done two COVID tests in the two days and I was there and ready to go I said have you got your passport and I said, oh, shit. Yeah, I actually brought it with me because I thought I'd be coming. <laughs> and he did you really? Was, did no, you have a feeling? Like, like, fuck. <laughs> so I phoned the missus and said, Bex, you need to get over here. I need my passport. And I'm in Edinburgh and live in Glasgow. And she said, well, she said, I thought you were going to France next week because we got Montpellier this week, Friday night. So she said, I thought you were going to France next week. I said, no, no, we're for Scotland. So she jumped in the car with a little one and then um, missed the school run on the way home. So I was really pissed off. Oh dear. She's got stuck oh. in traffic. But oh like yeah. Said, she be... would have driven me to Paris if it had meant it the the amount I wanted it. So yeah, it was pretty special. It was pretty special. Oh right, it is class. Do you feel like potentially it had anything to do with the conversation we had the last time you were on? Do you feel like Gregor listens to the podcast and he was like, Yeah, yeah. It is all down to you, Christina. All I down to so. you. Yeah. He's listened and he thought, oh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'll listen. I'll I'll go with them. Yeah, he's like, she knows what she's talking about. So no, I know it wasn't, back row. it wasn't planned when I'm walking through the airport in different players' kit. You know, it's like everyone's got their mic, they've got all their kit with the, the initials. Yeah. And I've got random initials on every different bit of kit. I get to the, <laughs> I get to security and I swear to God, I got to the security bit and I've stood there literally straight to the airport, like in my, in my kit, like trying to find stuff. And I got to security and I'm going, where's David Edge? Where's the manager? And they're like, well, I said, I haven't even got a ticket to get through security. Oh, my God. Like, oh, hold on. So he comes back. I thought they'd done me there. I thought they were winding me up. Imagine that. Left at security. You're not really coming, mate. Gosh, I, did, I did just... notice, though, right? I did notice when the when the trophy was there in the big picture, you were right next to it, mate. You were... John you were Terry-esque. <laughs> Whose idea was it to get you to lift the trophy? Mine. <laughs> 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 You could edit this really badly and like let just leave it there, but nah, I tried to stand it back because I'm like, right, listen, I've come in last minute. I've been in here 24 hours, so I stood at the back and Hoggy's come on, Wilson, it's your 50th. Get down the front and lift it. So I said, hey, listen, you didn't need to ask me twice. I was down there, John Terry in the front. Oh, fair play. Did you find out? Um, obviously, when Scotland put up their congratulations for your 50th cap, they'd photoshopped your head onto somebody else's body. Whose body was that? <laughs> no idea. No idea, but they've uh, managed to find someone with as small biceps as I have. So <laughs> that's quite impressive. <laughs> Definitely a back's body because my Swede looks quite big on top of it. And uh, come here. So obviously on social media, you looked very hanging the next morning on the bus. Have you have you recovered? Are you still recovering? Just about. I've just about recovered. I've been yeah, pretty ropey. We um because it was all really late. Bloody yeah, they play. Uh, you you played in France eh, before my like it was yeah. a nine o'clock kickoff. And I don't, I, yeah, it's not. It's, we, I'm used to the latest we play seven forty-five on a Friday night. It's nine o'clock, so 
we actually didn't get back to the hotel till about one and start doing the sort of because at the end of the tour obviously there's a bit of a court session and there's like awards and stuff for player of the tournament and all that sort of stuff so um yeah it went to the early hours in the morning and carried on a little bit on Saturday as well so I was uh, I was in a pretty rough place oh dear and um tell us did um did Finn get loose did you did you remind him of the bet um I can't really remember <laughs> I can't really remember a massive amount uh, from after in the change of room obviously they do the normal formalities you've got to get up and sing and, and do all that sorts of stuff so I haven't had to do any of that for ages because once you get your first cap you, you sort of get away with all that sort of stuff so uh, the fact that it was my 50th uh, what did you sing? Redemption song by Bob Marley that's my, <laughs> that's my go-to did you have to do anything else now on Friday night or was that it just your song? no just drink just drink can we have a bit. Can we have a bit, bit of it now, or? Oh, you want a bit of Bob Marley now? <laughs> you know, Wall pirates, yes, they rabbi. That's our start, and then we carry on. Very good, mate. Very good. <laughs> um, Mike, come here. I heard. Um, did you used to play some sort of tricks at the airport when you were playing? Did you demand world class tickets or something? Um. Yeah. Oh, it's just, it's an old story. Um. Yeah, if we were going down the Southern Hemisphere and we were in business class, I would, I would just make sure the boys were listening and I would go to the um, the stewardess and say, look, you know, there's something wrong with my ticket. I mean, um, you've got business class on this ticket. I'm world class. You know, there's something wrong. Yeah, there's something clearly wrong. So that, that was like the, I mean, I've that, about it's gone. It's done the, um, the after dinner sort of uh, rains now and it's 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 out there. So it's, it's an old story, but... Um, yeah, it was good, good crack and trying to make the boys laugh. And um, yeah, people have been dining out on that one, uh, using it. So um, um, yeah, good for them. <laughs> Too right. Did That's it ever good. work? Did you ever get upgraded on it? No. <laughs> Got put back. <laughs> yeah, it's stuck down in the back. Yeah. Um, now, Ryan, tell me, how did it feel being back in camp after so long? Um. It was it was strange because at one in the in the training session. Remember, I'd trained for Glasgow, so I'd pissed everyone off the whole training session. I was in my normal mood. I had pissed everyone off, so I think even they were like, oh, "Wilson was a right dick today." And then suddenly, Ryan Wilson has been added to the WhatsApp group, and they were like, "What?" Hold on. <laughs> so they were pissed off at me at first, um, but it was strange because I was um, I was the oldest person in the match day twenty three. I couldn't believe it. I'm only 31. Wow. I didn't think wow. that was old. I'm, I, I'm telling people like, I'm just about hitting the straps here. I'm, I'm in my prime. And they're going, mate, you're the oldest in the match day 23. Hamish Watson told me on the way to the team run. I was, that's when, I suppose I saw it in two ways. I was like, oh, that's quite good, actually. I'm glad I'm still in, managed to get in here. But also it shows you how good Scotland are going. Like they've got some youngsters in that team and and they're, they, they're only progressing. So, yeah, it was uh, it was a strange one, but bloody it was good to be back with the boys, be back with Hoggy and the likes of Finn and being able to have a beer with them. Hamish, what did you did you ever think that you wouldn't get your fiftieth cap? Was that annoying you at all? Or? Um, yeah, my, I thought it, I thought it'd been done. My honestly, I thought that was me because yeah, it's been eighteen months or whatever, um, and I've been playing. I've been going all right at Glasgow. That was the, that was the other thing. I'm like, I thought oh, I'm going all right, and spoke the tune at the beginning of the tournament. And he said, "Listen, just keep you know, you get the normal stuff off the coaches. Keep working on this. Keep working on that." And and then I could see boys going up ahead of me that hadn't been in the squad before. And you start to go right. Well, that's that's me done then. So like I said, it was lucky I'd done two COVID tests, mate, because otherwise they wouldn't have been taking me. Oh, Gosh, I, I, I'm still on 99 international caps, so I'm still waiting for my um, call up. So uh, are, you, with, are you actually on 99? With my Lions, yeah. But so hopefully Puvax listening to this. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Well, Ryan, I, I think when you look at the the social media posts across Friday and Saturday, like it, I think it showed how much it meant to the guys for you to get that cap as well, because you were in everyone's social media, and the fact that you got to lift the trophy and stuff as well, it really was special. So. Obviously, I'm delighted for you. I um, oh, appreciate it. But look, it was, and you, like for Scotland as well, you guys got your first victory in Paris in over 22 years on Friday. So I suppose tactically now, can you bring us up to speed on what the guys were working on um, last week to upset France's cre creativity? And, you know, how did you, what did you come up with to overcome their well-drilled defence? Were you just told, <laughs> you have no idea? 
I turned up and just got stuck on the bench and came on and did 15 minutes. I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> no. So it's not even a thing. Do they not even like, no. like, like sit you down and be like, right, this is our game plan. We're going to bring up to speed crash course here. Or Yeah, but what, what you've got to remember is there is, there's like 15 plays I've got to learn and I'm covering six and eight chance of seven, but Jamie Ritchie would have gone to seven if Hamish came off. So I've got like, a lot of roles I've got to learn. Then I've got to, then I've got to learn the lineouts, which Mark will never understand. It is like the most complicated thing on earth. I'm used to it, Glasgow just going right, chuck me up and throw me the ball. <laughs> Suddenly they're like, right, you got to do this, you got to lift it, and I'm going. So I've got that. I've got plays, lineouts, X six kickoffs, twenty twos. There's no time for telling me like right, this. By the way, this is the plan. This is how they play. Um, sat down with Steve Tandy. Do you know Steve Tandy, Mike? Yeah, yeah, played with Steve. Yeah. yeah, so he's a good bloke. It was the first time I've worked with him. Um, so I had a crash course in what they're doing in defence, but it's not fast, you know, fast what we're doing at Glasgow. So it was pretty easy to slot in that way. And yeah, he sort of just said to me, listen, mate, I don't want to cloud your head with a load of crap, but this is how we defend. And, and that's it. You don't really, I didn't have an opportunity to go and work out all the tactics. So no, I couldn't tell you. I think we just tried to play our rugby and you probably saw that. Mike, if you're looking for your like 100 cap, would you ever consider going over to maybe play for one of the, the teams in America, like the Giltinis or the whatever, the one Ben Foden? He's looking for 100 international caps, Chris. International. Uh, he needs yeah. Wales or Irons. Damn it. Yeah. Uh, I've played a few. Um, no, um, I don't know if the contract's there, if, it's, if the money's big enough, you never know. There we are. There we, there we go. There we go. Well, I saw the stadium. It was what it's at the LA Coliseum or something. It looks class. Um, so yeah, what I feel like I should just the Giltinis with uh, Gitto, Adam Ashley Cooper. Is the stadium big enough for my fans? I don't know. Is it... I don't think so. Yeah, I think you'd need to set up like a fan zone outside as well, just okay, to yeah. fit them all in. Okay, we'll 